Hello Rivera Beach, my name is Councilman Douglas Lawson, District 5. I'm the representative for the city that was duly elected to serve your community and this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to serve the community. And how I serve the community is by honoring our pillars, community pillars, and our trailblazers. And I'm honored to have the great Mr. Dan Calloway here. One of the mentors from this community, not just for myself, but for hundreds and thousands of residents that have come through the city of Rivera Beach. Mr. Calloway, it's an honor to have you here today. It's and an I'm, honor to take this time to be with you today. And I'm very pleased, Commissioner, that you thought enough to have me here in February, which is Black History Month, one of the most, we should have it every month, but this is very important. We're gonna go ahead and start that tradition where we're not just gonna honor our leaders and give them their flowers, you know, while they're here, but we're gonna honor them on a regular basis. I'm not gonna wait for Black History Month because your story needs to be told. And residents, you're in for a treat. Because we have a gentleman that's an athlete, that's a coach, that's a mentor, that's been a police officer, that's been a, an advocate for this community for 80 plus years. From birth, he came out running. So guys, you're in for a treat today. The great Mr. Dan Calloway, we're gonna get started with you, sir. Thank I wanted you. people to know why we're here. And thank you. And, and I'm very pleased to be here with you because I just think you are an outstanding person and you're doing a tremendous job in the leadership on our council. I just wish every council person had the uh, intestine of fortitude to take the banner and run with it because when you serve God's children, yes. that is the most important thing. Yes. You reminded me months ago that you always will look out for the least, the lost, and the left out. And by doing that, you're doing what God wants to do. Amen. Forget about man. Yes, sir. Not to get ahead of everything. The pandemic has put us in a position right now when we need to galvanize ourselves together mm -hmm. and pull and look out for the ones who can't look out for themselves. Now, that's why God put on this pandemic all over the world. Amen. See, we've been fighting each other, but now we need to get right back together and be the per person that we're supposed to do is look out for our fellow, fellow man. Amen. I, I wholeheartedly agree, and that's what we have to do. So, Mr. Calloway, I want you, and I'm going to sit back and put my seatbelt on. <laughs> I want you to tell us about your history in the great city of Rivera Beach. Well, I was born in 1938. August 18, I'll be 83 years of age, right on S Avenue, 3009. Mm. My mother and father had five kids, four boys and a girl. I'm the fourth boy, and my sister, who's a retired educator, uh, she's two and a half years younger than me. Now, she doesn't like for me to say that, that, that means I'm telling her <laughs> age, but I'm so glad I still have her because my three brothers are gone. Yes. R right on S Avenue. Now, don't let anybody tell you S Avenue is just the world's worst person in the world because it can't be that because I came off it. You came right off of it. Right off it. And a lot of more people, and I'm proud of Riviera. Now, I might have traveled all over the world because my background, you know, everybody knew I'm in something about me playing some kind of sports. And I was blessed. And because sports have a tendency to teach you how to be partnership with your family, your friends, your teammates, or whatever. It teach, it galvanizes white and black and everybody together. That's what is the glue to keep our community together because of sports. But we should be like that in all walks of life. Yes. Now, saying that, when I grew up in Riviera, born here, I started school in 1943 at Washington Junior High School right on uh, 30th Street, no, 31st Street. Yes. That's where Washington Junior High School was. It went from, from first to ninth grade. In 1950, they built Roosevelt. They closed down Washington from the uh, junior high school and made an elementary school. And we would bus down to, uh, which is now UB Kensington. It was Palm View then. It used to be Industrial High. And they built Roosevelt, and I spent four years at Roosevelt. And I said this to y'all, the young people, you know, you get labeled, well, he's the coach. He touched many lives through coaching. Well, that's one way I could use my talent. My talent was as an athlete, a student athlete. When you make all state, when you make all area, and then when you go into all these Hall of Fames, see, in the Riviera Hall of Fame, Palm Beach County Sports Hall of Fame, in my high school, Roosevelt Hall of Fame, the New York Black Golfers Hall of Fame, and the German Hall of Fame. Yes. 
Yeah. See, I spent years over in Europe. In Europe and while well. I was over in the Europe, the, the military allowed me to play in the European uh, Basketball League, one. And then they put me over the, the, uh, the, the Army baseball team, which we won in Europe, but we lost in, the, over for, in California when we went back to Fort Orr. But that gave me the idea that somebody helped me. See, our problem is that we get some gifts and one of the two things happen. We either bury the talent, and the Bible tells you about it, it was three, three people given one, three, and five. One and three buried their talent, God took it from them, and gave it to the one with five because they were doing more. See, when you've got a talent, you need to use that talent. Do not bury it. And the greatest talent is to touch somebody like, especially kids, and they come back and tell you thank you. Give you a case in point. Derek Hopper called me. Derek Hopper should be in the uh, in, in NBA Hall of Fame, oh, one of the greatest athletes ever left here. Played 15 years, and now he is the color commentator for the Dallas Mavericks. He called, he said, Mr. Callaway, I just was thinking about you, and I needed to find out, because I, I got to help you out, because I know you're doing something. I said, yeah, Derek, we're feeding a lot of people right now. We buy them a month of grocery. Now, a month of grocery costs them quite a bit of money right now. Absolutely. But the point is, if they know they got food in their cupboard to eat for a month, then a lot of us can sleep well. Because I can't sleep well knowing that I don't miss a meal, and I got heat or uh, air in my house, and here so many people are struggling. Yes. See, the, 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 the African said it takes a village the real child, well, that's what we need to, to do with our city. All of us is responsible for each of us. And if we can carry that out, and there's one thing I can say about Riviera. When I was coming up with my brothers, and I always had something that most people didn't have, was a mother and father. I was 61 when my mother died. I was 49 when my father died. I've always had my mother and father uh, putting me up to 50 years in my adult life. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, something that most people can't say. They have two parents in that house. So I know I'm blessed and my family was blessed because my father with a fourth grade education, he taught me and my brothers and my sisters, you go get a job and you do your job well Whatever happens, somebody will always give you work because you did your job well and you were honest not to go out here and take things or steal things or do things that are wrong. You always be that. And that's been my motto. Teach them how to work. Teach them. If you teach a person how to be independent, then they don't have to worry about doing some things to, to hustle, whether stealing hubcaps was it uh, breaking into cars, was it selling drugs and all these things that decimate a community. You can't do that. See, one thing we do in the black community, we have a tendency to protect the people that we love when they break the law, and you shouldn't do that. You got to teach people how to respect the law. Yeah. And if you need help, let's get help for them. I don't believe in incarcerating everybody because a lot of times, uh, uh, the incarceration system doesn't really do anything for them. Uh, they come out and they still try to perfect that and be better with it and go back to jail because nobody don't give them a second chance like they should. But there's a lot of things. But one thing I do know, and I'm the recipient of so many calls, like the, the, the Christmas, the Easter's, and different things of so many people that I touched their life a long time ago, but somebody did that for me. The first black police officer in the, in the city of Riviera Beach in 1949, he was hired, late 48 and first of 49, was David Fields. And David Fields in 1950 saw a bunch of us playing on, on, in the middle of the street. And he said, you kids need to be in a little league. <laughs> and I said, but the, the group, and I said, where are we going to get the uniform? Where are we going to get the bats and balls and everything? He went to the Kiwanis yes. and bought us uniform. Now, he didn't buy them. The Kiwanis gave us the, 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 the blue and gold mm -hmm. uh, shirt. We couldn't pronounce 
pronounce the word Kiwanis. We were saying the KKKKKK, and they put us in the, uh, the league in West Palm Beach at Lincoln Park. It's Coleman Park now because everything was segregated. He paid two jitney drivers. They had the, the taxes, they had a, a, a bus like, I mean, a, a station wagon like, they call it a, a, a jitney. Yes. And they carried us there. We didn't have a manager, a coach. And I hate to tell you this, and I'm glad to tell you, on the other hand, I was 12 years of age. I was my own coach and, was and the other boys. They listened to me. We went down there and won that. Yes, sir. Because somebody, all that we wanted was a chance. So you started coaching at 12? 12 years of age. Callaway, there it is. <laughs> the only person, and you know who was on the team? Yes, sir. He didn't play much, but Reverend Davis. Reverend, Reverend Griffin Davis. Davis was a pitcher. But wait a minute, what you said now? You said he didn't play much? Didn't play much. Reverend Griffin Davis, no, you hear him now. He didn't play much. Mr. Calloway said uh, you didn't play much, but you no. was you were on the team. You made yeah, the team. He made the team. Reverend Davis. But his brother, <laughs> Willie Bo Davis, yes. he could have signed to go with the Chicago Cubs in 1954 because they tried to sign both of us out of the Negro League. He was a tremendous ball player. We're going to touch on that. I don't want you to go too deep now yeah. because we're going to get to that part. Okay. Some of the things that I want to touch on that you spoke about was – you have to teach families and teach people how to fish. Yeah. Because they're not going to be able to eat unless you teach them how to fish. And mm -hmm. long standing. Because we can't just keep giving it to them. You have to teach them. Two family households, two parent households, mm -hmm. you spoke about. And I've had other speakers that have come here that have talked about their two family, two parent household. That's so important. It is. That's reminding our residents and our community to make things work, to raise these kids. Whether you don't work as a couple, make sure that you're there for your children because it's a need. It's a necessity because I came from a two-parent household. I grew up in that environment and I'm able to be an elected official for the city. Mr. Callaway grew up in that environment. The Senator Bobby Powell spoke in his interview about that. So those are some important things that you touched on. And last thing you talked about was it takes a village. Village, always. When, uh, you were one of the first people when I came to meet with you when I was running for office and I sat down with Mr. Dan Callaway. And I was honored because I was like, wow, I'm, I'm meeting a gentleman that has a name on a building. I, <laughs> I, I, I was so honored to be in your presence. And you told me that it's not about you. It's not mm -hmm. about me. Mm -hmm. It's about working together as a village. Mm -hmm. It's coming together and feeding the least, the lost, and the left out. Mm -hmm. And that stuck with me, Mr. Mm -hmm. Calloway. So thank you. And I keep doing that. I keep doing that because that stuck with me. And that's something that you told me. Well, I want to, go ahead. I think that you were just tremendous. Because on every setting, whether it's at a church, yes, which I've been a member of Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church for 67 years. Yes, I was baptized in 53. 67 years I have been a member of Mount Island Missionary Baptist Church. See, because when you're grounded with, with, with the family, and then your church, and then the school, yes. and then the community, yes, if you put those four together, and respect each one of them, you're going to be successful. See, it's a breakdown in our society. Yes. See, this is the reason why we need young people like you with a vision. Yes. See, you brought a vision here. Uh, you, you, you went two or three meetings. You, you came before Mama, Mothers Against Murders, yes. and then the Youth Recreation Associate, Association. You said, just call me when you need me. I can open some, some doors. Yes, now, if all the, the elected officials in all the counties, I have six elected officials, the mayor and the five councilmen, it had that type of idea, um, I think that we would be much further. And then you can't put it always on the elected officials. Right. You got to put it on the, the business people. Yes. They owe a modicum of something to give something back. Yep. And see, if everybody give a little, it becomes a lot. See, when you said about the fishing situation, the Chinaman said, if I give you a fish, I'll eat for a day. But if you, I teach you how to fish, you'll eat for a lifetime. That's what we're supposed to do. Teach them. That, there's a, a, a group of people right now, like Arizona the South Pole. They're teaching people how to be uh, builders in construction. Yes. There's people out there like Derek McCray who owns his own, and the family own their own 
a, a barbecue business, he's teaching people how to be an entrepreneur in that. And there's a lot of people like that. Yes. Now, of course, you, you, you call on to go to different out, uh, churches, schools and everything on career days to tell them about your job. You, 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 you are a, a, an entrepreneur. Yes, you got your own tax, uh, yes, uh, whatever they do with the CR, yes, the CPA yes, uh, and everything with the taxes. And, and, and most of all, you're given information. You are what we call a beacon of light. Thank you, sir. If all the young people, like when, you, when he had Bobby Powell, yes, he grew sir. up right in Monroe Heights. He did. All he his did. people, I grew up with them. Uh, and to, for him to be up in Tallahassee, and for you to go to school here, yes, sir. and then now you come back, you could have gone a million places. One of my favorite people that worked with you, Lottie. I, when Lottie was uh, coming up, he didn't have two parents. I'm the one who used to buy all his shoes and clothes. He tells me all the time. A lot, and, and the only thing I wanted Lottie to do is go and do just like he's doing. He played with the Globetrotters. Uh -huh. He had a chance to play other places. And he ended up going into law enforcement. Lorenzo Lolly Hutchinson. Lolly said, Lawson, anytime you're doing something, call me and I'm there. Unbelievable. Because he wants to continue to give back because you were one of the ones that instilled that in him. And it continues. It's a trend. It's mm -hmm. a pattern that we're creating. And it started with you. Literally, there's so many young players, athletes, because traditionally, historically in this community, a lot of these young black men and women, unless they were playing a sport, weren't getting out of this community. That, 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 was, a, that, was, a, that was their ticket to get a scholarship. That was a ticket. Well, in latter years, when Otis Anderson, uh, which in 1991, he was the uh, most valuable player in the Super Bowl when the Giants beat Buffalo. Uh, he had 147 yards and two touchdowns. And Otis is on my commission the, for a fundraiser for scholarships. Yes. For 15 years, the last year we didn't give anything because of the pandemic. Him and Laverne Graham stopped. That's the Graham girls coming out of a, a federal garden. Mm -hmm. A part of the youth recreation, they put on golf tournaments and they raised funds. The last two years before the pandemic, we raised over $90,000 to give away to so many students. Yes. Now, of course, the, the, my, my ability to evaluate talent, and so colleges was automatic would be calling me to send the Anthony Carters, mm -hmm. the Lamar Paris, the Otis Andersons, the Richard Relford, the Cecil Relford, and all these people, and many, 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 many more. Mm -hmm. But what I would tell each kid, you go and get a good education. Whether you make it to the pros or not, that's, that's, that's good. But I need you to make a good, get a good education. Because in 1956, when I finished school at Roosevelt, on 15th and Tamara, Roosevelt High School, Richard Riles, who's a lawyer, his grandfather was my high school baseball coach. And being All-American in baseball, and I could have played any sport, because I did play any sport, all the sport, but I knew I wanted to be a baseball player because when I was nine years of age in 47, the Brooklyn Dodgers signed Jackie Robinson. Yes. And black people, there were no basketball and football players in the pros then. Mm -hmm. But it was baseball. So everybody fell in love with Jackie Robinson and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Yes, Only other hero we had at the time he was boxing, Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray. I grew up with those people. We idolized them. That's all we, we didn't have no TV, but we had a radio. When Joe Lewis would, would win, the whole city of Riviera would be shooting shotguns up in the air because a black man won. Yep. Because there wasn't that many black people. And then when Jackie Robinson got in there, he became our hero. And he carried, carried it further because he fought for the right for black people. Martin Luther King and a lot of people did a wonderful job. But it all started with Jackie Robinson. Branch Mickey, Ricky, signed him in 46, 
and Jackie Robinson, who had graduated from uh, UCLA, and he went on in the army as the first lieutenant. Remember now, all the performers, all the great people in the movies and everything, in the entertainment, they couldn't go certain places. But after Jackie Robinson got in there, the doors started opening where so many things, not in baseball. See, right now we're celebrating, not celebrating, we celebrate his life already. I'm on a committee right now that being interviewed about Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Mm -hmm. I played in the same Negro League that they came from. But it was at the end. But the point is, we didn't have the, nothing but that then. But the, all the doors open. So when, 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 when my little black kids tell me we can't do anything, we can't do but so much, uh, let me see, 12, 8 and 4 is 12. The day that President Obama won, that eliminated I can't. Because they used to throw it in the face. The only thing, I said, well, we can't be the president of the United States. Because we never had one. But we got one. That was the last venue that held black people always with an excuse. There's no excuse. No excuse. To that point, there's been such a change and shift over the history of our community, of our nation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you remember from the Civil Rights Movement? and what were some of the challenges people faced at that time in our nation's history? Well, you know, I'm one of the few people who, who marched with uh, Martin Luther King. I know, I know. Be before, I, before I moved back to Florida to come back, that's what sent me back to Florida. Yes, sir. They were riding in New York and they were riding in Newark. They burned down Newark in 1967. My father, mother, my grandmother, I was living, and my older brother, we were living in Newark with our grandmother. Yes, we owned a, a, a soul food restaurant, three-story building, a restaurant on the bottom floor, and we lived on the second and the third floor, yes, 91 Sherman Avenue. I said to, to my friends in New York, I got to go back home. Home is really out, because I didn't like riding. Right. I didn't like all that burning and fighting and looting and all that stuff. Because, see, Martin wasn't teaching us that. He was teaching us nonviolent. But then there was other groups. But we had to have all them other groups to balance the scale. To balance it. The Black Panther movement. And oh, yeah. And, 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 and Islam, yes. Oh, all oh, that. And, and, and I think that the, the Farrakhan yes. is probably the second greatest speaker I have ever heard. Wow. And wow. When the Muslims split up, and, and when he was here, when I was in law enforcement, I was a, a, a person of bodyguard, because I couldn't afford anybody to, have anything, uh, to hurt him. Hold on, hold, hold on, Mr. Calloway. I'm sorry, you said you were what? The person of bodyguard, Sheriff Richard Willis said, Sergeant, you go and make sure nothing happened to Farrakhan on our watch in Palm Beach County. Wow. And, and, uh, and, 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 and Maud Lee, who got us all together, the late Maul Lee. We had, he had his own bodyguard, but I had to, they had to answer to me. Yeah. Because I didn't want it to be a riot. If something would have happened to a, a, a Farrakhan in this town, or a, a Martin Luther, or something like that. Yeah. Oh, it was and you were the personal bodyguard. The personal bodyguard. The great Maud Lee Ford, her daughter, um, Vanessa, came and spoke to my mentees uh, last year She's before the pandemic, and she is Phenomenal, Wonderful person. Phenomenal person. She used to be on my softball team. And then when she was working up at Kennedy. Of course. Why, why wouldn't she be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Vanessa's just tremendous. But let me put it this way here. Yes, sir. I don't hold the struggles of life like a lot of people living in the past. Yes, sir. I don't have that. I'm not going to do that. Because I'm denying what I was taught as a Christian. Yes, sir. And Christianity is a, uh, is a derivative of what Christ like. That's what that stands for. We don't put all our wants and wishes in God's hand. Mm -hmm. See, because in the Lamb Book of Life, it's already there. Yes, and he's a jealous God. He needs us to come to him and all of us live like brothers and sisters. And that's what Martin was coming. 
See, they, they interviewed me over 30 some years ago, and they asked me, it was a profile the Palm Beach Post was doing on me, and they said, who are some of the people that you look up to? Yeah. I named two people. Yes, sir. My friend is a white guy named Bucky McGann. His, his daughter named Michelle McGann. She's a professional golfer. And when Bucky and Bernadette, his wife, had their kids, from day one, they learned to speak, and they, and they, and, and they looked at me as Uncle Danny, yeah. or Uncle Dan. If you ever meet Bern uh, Michelle McGann, or J.C. McGann, and you say, I'm told you know Dan Keller, you know my uncle? But they're white. But you see, I didn't look at them as they're white, and they didn't look at me as white because Bucket was like my little brother. See, when we read on your city recreation, he was the, the director and I was his assistant. Yes, and because when you work together and you got a common bond together, you relate to people. I lost a lot of brothers that weren't my blood brothers. I had folk, but I had a hundred of other guys like Herman McCray, Don Wilson, Clark Mutt, Johnny Carlisle, just a few. And then now their sons and daughters are still my nieces and nephews. Yes, sir. But what I like for to, 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 to the listening audience and the people who listen at this, the times that I was reared up in, I tell the story. Because there was a movie uh, called Roots, the name of it was Roots. Alex Haley out of Tennessee, wrote that book, and they, play, they, they, they made a movie on it. And when the white slave catchers was going to bring some, they call them, uh, of course, uh, they were mostly Spanish people, yeah. speaking people. Right. They kidnapped Kunta Kente, if you remember the movie. I do. They brought him over here against his will. But when he got here, he was always trying to get back to the Belonga River because he wanted to go back home. He didn't come here because he wanted to. And when he married and he had a daughter called Kizzy, he would tell Kizzy about the story of the uh, African village. And when Kizzy had Chicken George, she told him the story. And then Chicken George had four kids and he told them the story. See, our problem is we don't tell the story. We Good ashamed point. and we, 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 we want to just suppress it. Yes, sir. You don't suppress the story. You tell that's your, that's story. what history is. A recorded event validated by the truth. So we live this. Thank of course, you. when I tell you about your love city mm -hmm. here now, mm -hmm. uh, I, I was an adult premier before we could be going across the track on the east side after seven o'clock, unless we were, had a job. Met Monroe Heights with a wall right there now. The, wall. the same wall. We wouldn't let them tear it all down. So reminder that only white people lived over there. And now fantastic. it was to keep the black people from looking across the fence at the white women over there putting the clothes up. Yep. That, I'm telling you what happened. Now, we didn't, uh, when they had the Ku Klux Klan burning the uh, cross right there on 13th Street where the, when a uh, drive-in theater became, everybody was afraid. My mother had put us up on her bed and she would get, crawl under and get on top of us, go give her life. If they come in and start shooting and killing, they would kill her. My mother was trying to protect her five kids and the four boys would say, Mama, we don't want, want no scared. We got a rifle. Yeah. Let us go get them. Yeah. We didn't know. We, we were going to fight for us and fight for other people. But we had God on our side because we didn't have no but a single shot rifle. <laughs> and nobody, and nobody had, had slingshots. They thought they were David against the giant. But I'm telling you, I don't hold that against my white brothers right. because they weren't back there doing that. It was their ancestor. And then what we supposed to say, Lord, forgive them because they know not what they're doing. That's mm -hmm. what we supposed to put it in God's hand. And I guarantee you, 
There's few ancestors from back there living right now. They never dreamed of a man like you holding the position you have. And then you living on the east side of the track and then the east side of a, a US-1 yes, near that water? Yes, no. If you could tell your 15-year-old self anything, what would it be? I would tell him that model your life for people who got Christ in their life. Mm -hmm. Because it takes someone bigger than an individual to get us where we're trying to go. See, most people think that they got this all this power, they can take this self and everything like that. Yes, can you control the, the, the sun? No, can sir. you control the wind? No, now, just think about the last five hurricanes in the last three years that was coming straight through the Bahamas. And it was last year, remember? It sat on the Bahamas. It, 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 right there. Right there. Decimated. 60 miles away from Yes. Yeah. And every time it got near this coast, God moved it uh, inches to the right. Yes. It come in around Indian River County. Yes. Fort Pierce, Bureau Beach, Fells Mill. And that's why I told you when I sat with you months ago mm -hmm. that we need to build a shelter. For the house 500 people when, when a hurricane, it's going to come. It's going to come. And it's if we come. got a shelter, remember now, five or six years ago, Pastor Parker there on, on the Silver Beach Road at Hearst Chapel, he had a generator. Two months, we were feeding people cooking the food, a soup kitchen. What we need is our own soup kitchen that we, ha we got it year round, six days a week. You got homeless people under the bridge over on Singles Island. Now, of course, the mayor of West Palm Beach, they had more. Yes. They put them out, but we still got them. What are we doing about that? And that's the point, and that's actually my next question, because we speak all the time, but I want our residents, I want the people that are watching, I want some of these young leaders to know, what is your hope for Rivera Beach? What do you want to see for this beautiful city? Well, I think it's one of the best places in the world to live, number Amen. one. I Hands think down. you got everything at your disposal. And then it's a mixture of people from up north, and even when it's racism, but they're not like some of those racism that were crazy was going at uh, in the insurrection at the, at the White House. That, yes, that was just dumb that was and bad. That was disgusting. Well, the, the people here normally, and they, most of them came from up north, and the ones who were born here, we, they all know each other. We got some good people here. Mm -hmm. Only thing they need a chance. I would tell everybody, we, we, we need to be the model for the whole world. Yes, and we can't uh, we, we, got the, we got the makings, we got the foundation, because one thing I know the people, the churches, the senior citizens, when we have the senior citizens, every time we have that before the pandemic, yep. you would show up. Yep. We bring in the people from different other places in the glades and everybody models at everybody while we're doing and having fun. Yep. One thing I can say, that the, uh, the administration and the, uh, I think that the, your uh, recreation director yes. and with his uh, senior citizen program Mr. Richard on the Gwen and, 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 uh, and, and her staff. Gwen and Alice, they're doing a and, and job. Gwen and Alice are just doing a fantastic job with the, uh, and Alice is one of my girls. Yes. I'm like her godfather. There we go. and, 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 and Blankenship is just tremendous. Everything, see, when, when people come here, and wanna, the first thing they're going to ask about, number one will be, what about our law enforcement? Mm -hmm. What kind of law enforcement we got? And number two, they're going to ask about the school. What kind of, we got, of course, you know, schools. the school, uh, Suncoast, mm -hmm. and uh, the elementary schools, and John F. Kennedy, and of course, uh, Emma Banks, Dr. Dr. Banks School, in, yeah, in that Grove, it's just wonderful. My grandson even graduated from there. Uh, one of my grandchildren. I think that we have the capacity to sit down at the, at the table of brotherhood. And this is what Martin Luther King said. Yes. And this is the most important thing 
you allow me to say on this for black history, and it's about last month you celebrated Martin Luther King uh, holiday. Martin Luther King simply was in one of his speeches, he, 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 he ended up and he said that it's going to be a, be a greater and a better day. Because of God's, we all are God children. He said we are born in his image, created in his image. He said fleecy locks and black complexion. Nature cannot fault which is clean, but skin will, skin will dwell and black and self, black and white the same. And he said if one of you could reach the pole, and grasp the ocean at a span, you must be measured by your mind because the soul is a standard of the man. Now what am I saying? You, the white, nobody is no better than no, and anybody. We are all created the same. Yes, sir. See, we have to establish this with young people. See, some people got to die out before they change, black or white. I've got some white friends that never change, and I got some black friends that never changed. They're still living in the Civil War. But we must teach the kids. You can't have what you read in the paper two weeks ago that the kids are going online to go to school and everybody got an F. Yep. You know why? The parents are not there to look over their shoulder. The parents are trying to make a living, yep. trying to bring something in here. Yes, we must be able to go and feed those families that can't feed the kids because first law of nature is self-preservation. Self They're going to go out and try to get something to take care of the kids. Yes, and that's what they should do. But sometimes we must lend them a hand and help take care of the kids. We're going to have to be sir good parents. Your 80 plus years, sir, you've been nothing but a servant leader. And from the day that I met you, Mr. Calloway, you've preached the about same serving thing. our community. It's yes. inconsistent. You literally are that wealth of knowledge. And everybody, residents, anyone that's watching, all of our followers, journalists, this man spoke about being personal security for the great Louis Farrakhan, marching with Martin Luther King, doing, doing things that you can only imagine. So anyone that's watching, you need to showcase this man. I'm going to continue to showcase him, and he's one of my pillars of this community. He's a trailblazer. So that's why I'm honoring him there this month for Black History Month, but I'm not gonna stop here. So anybody else that wants to go ahead and get this on a Netflix special, on an HBO special, you need to do that. Because this man is a wealth of knowledge coming right out of this beautiful city, the best city to live, work, and play. Mr. Callaway, you spoke about Jackie Robinson being labeled as a hero mm -hmm. and actually being a hero, one of your heroes. I'm telling you today, I'm here to give you your flowers because you are one of my heroes. I appreciate that, I appreciate that. You've honored, <laughs> you, you've literally proven to be one of the great pillars of this community. I appreciate and that. And I honor you. Is there anything else you want to give to the no, residents? No, I, uh, I, I want people to think, uh, understand, and somebody look and say, well, you know, they named the building after him 28 years ago, and everybody go in and out of that uh, the, the, the tape. That is not what I set out to do. Right. That, uh, I might have set out to be the best baseball player, basketball player, football player to try to make the Hall of Fame, but uh, I wanted to, to play it because I loved that. Sure. But when you get my age, what you do is do, you, 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 you cut it back a little bit. But as long as I got my mind, and of course everybody know my sight is impaired. I'm legally blind, but I don't let that keep me Hello. from doing and going where I gotta go. Hello. But I think that you you got to treat people like you want to be treated. Amen. And because of uh, I had a mother and a father who was a God fearing people. Yes. Because the the, the 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 community and the church was all together at Bon mm -hmm. Ninety eight years. We've gone on ninety eight years. What happened, we had a bell tower, and they would ring the bell for Sunday school all over town. You could hear that bell all the way in the south. If you know where Mount Ali is, it was all on the south end, that bell. The young guys would go and they just ring the bell. Ring the bell when the 
the Sunday school's over and the church is over and then they come back that afternoon and everything started with the family and the church because we didn't have all these other things. We didn't have movies, we didn't have bowling alleys, we didn't have, uh, we, we had a, 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 a Negro team yeah. in the league played in Riviera. I was the bat boy in 1948 and they ended up being one of the best players that ever played there. That's where I was signed out. But the point is, we were closer then, and, and Wells Jim is named after a white man. They call him Pappy Wells. He owned the ice house. We didn't have refrigerators then. We had ice box. And we would buy 25 pounds of ice. And a lot of times the people didn't have the money for it, but he would credit to it. So what I'm trying to say is, in the community, I didn't tell you that I grew up throwing the football up and down the street on E Avenue. You know who was catching the ball? Who? Burt Reynolds. We called him Buddy. <laughs> His daddy was assistant police chief. Listen, residents, we're going to stop there. Because I don't know if you just heard this gentleman say he was just playing catch with Burt Reynolds. <laughs> residents, we want you to understand that we have leaders right here in this community that are still leading by example. Mr. Callaway? Yes. We're going to cut our series Good. here, but I'm not going to cut the work we're doing. That's beautiful. I want all of our residents to know it's time to rethink government and be the change you want to see. So if we're going to do that, we're going to work together. Our call to action is to come together. Be the change we want to see. Thank you for tuning in, residents of Revere Beach. Thank you, Mr. Dan Callaway, for being an amazing leader for this community. Boom. Thank you. Interviewing uh, Mr. Dan Calloway was an amazing honor. Mr. Calloway has been a leader here in this community. And my experience with Mr. Calloway, it's a great story of just going to meet him um, and knowing him. I've known him for years, but actually, you know, playing in Tate's gym and Calloway's gym and not really knowing the man that he was. I sat down with Mr. Calloway and he started talking about certain things. But before I met with him, I was told a story, you know, oh, well, Mr. Calloway, you're gonna go meet with him. He's gonna try to shake you down. He's gonna try to get some money uh, up out of you. And so going in, I was apprehensive because I was nervous. I didn't know this great giant and if I was gonna get shut down, I had no money in my pockets anyway. But Mr. Calloway told me that he wanted to be committed to this community. He was raising a village. He wanted a village to work together. And all of the experiences he had was just to further this path. Of course, you know, he asked for support for Youth Rec, for Mama, and for all the young people here. But I quickly learned that request was never for Mr. Calloway. It was for the people of this community. Every dollar he's ever raised has gone back to the people. And I was honored to contribute, to commit, and to continue to lead by example. Mr. Calloway, I'm honored to have sat down and met with you. You are a community leader. You're a pillar of this community and you are a trailblazer. And Mr. Calloway, my name is Douglas Lawson, city council. I'm honored to have took the time to actually speak with you. Thank you, Mr. Calloway.